Kevin Rudd, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. So you did play a pivotal role in achieving this outcome. What can you tell us about how it came about? Uh, well, David, I play one role among many. Uh, the good thing about the Australian Foreign Service is that they are a disciplined crew and they work well together. And the truth is, it doesn't matter how good your diplomatic team is, uh, you need um, prime ministerial authorisation, prime ministerial direction, and frankly, a clear prime ministerial mandate to engage the US system at a level of seniority which would make a difference. And that's what made this possible. It also required the US Justice Department to agree to look at a deal. When did that start to become, come into the picture and did the Justice Department take much convincing? Well, um, the Prime Minister raised these matters with President Biden very early in his period in office and uh, was persistent in doing so. Uh, I've been in the post, as you know, for a little more than a year. Um, my job, um, assigned to me by our PM, was to engage with um, Mr Assange's lawyers, uh, to engage with the Department of Justice, to work out uh, what their ultimate positions were, and then to encourage them to the point that they could actually get together uh, and to begin to work out alternatives for the future. Either you take this extraordinarily complex legal case through to its conclusion with appeal after appeal after appeal after appeal, or you strike a bargain with a plea bargain. And just explain how that works. I mean, how independent is the Justice Department? How open are they to persuasion from the likes of an Australian ambassador? Well, uh, ultimately, Mr Assange's legal interests are represented by his legal counsel, and you've seen them in action in recent days. Um, and, uh, so you were just bringing them together? Bringing them together and separately, quietly, discussing uh, possible landing points. But, yeah, but is pointing out Australia's view on this uh, influential, does that matter to the Justice Department? Remember, at the end of the day, uh, the Department of Justice obviously operates under its own procedures. It's also part of the executive arm of the United States government. And, uh, and it therefore has a significant relationship with Australia uh, across a whole wide range of law enforcement matters uh, before you go to our defence and security and intelligence relationship as well. Mm -hmm. The key thing was, as the Prime Minister had said, uh, given the particular pro prominence of this case, was it had gone on for far too long and therefore what was the best means by which this could be brought to a close. So engaging the interlocutors at the International Division of the Department of Justice who are there for that purpose to engage foreign governments and with the legal team and to apply a bit of creative nous about how we could find a way through this. Well, let's talk about the creative nous. Um, whose idea was it to go through Saipan to have this dealt with at a fairly remote out? post for a, a federal court judge? Well, these are discretionary matters for the Department of Justice. Mm. But the uh, question of the appropriateness of the jurisdiction, that is, that place as opposed to other district courts within the United States legal system, would have to be agreed to also by Mr Assange's lawyers. So a landing point was uh, reached, pardon the pun, uh, but was it was it uh, their idea? Was it, was it your idea? Wait, no, it certainly uh, didn't come from the Australian government. It was uh, developed uh, in consultation between the two parties. Mm. Did the Assange? Our job was to facilitate. Did the Assange team take some convincing to agree to a guilty plea? Well, that's a matter you need to um, uh, put to them. I don't wish to be providing public commentary on their private uh, legal deliberations. You'd expect, David, that uh, when you're dealing with complex legal matters, that there'll be a range of views. Um, but again, if you stand back from the detail, what's it ultimately a decision about? Do you allow this um, court case to go from extradition to substantive deliberation to appeal in the United States, to further appeal in the United States, with ultimately a Supreme Court case on the future of the First Amendment and the application of the First Amendment's principles on freedom and freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of the press, and does that apply to foreigners acting in a capacity like Mr Assange, or do you cut a deal through a plea bargain? And, um, and that is constantly with the binary choices we face and working that through sensitively the system, not intruding into the autonomy of the parties was what I think any professional diplomat would do. Why did you have to be there with him on the, on the journey? Well, the truth of the matter is, uh, number one, 
I had been the principal point of contact with the DOJ, the Department of Justice, kind of from the get-go, right. uh, and with um, the um, and Mr. Assange's lawyers. Um, so you were the linchpin. Uh, that's your term, not mine. Uh, the political linchpin to make this whole thing work was a prime minister who decided to actually make this a prominent issue with the United you, States. You were dealing with both the Assange team and the Department of Justice trying to shepherd this whole deal through. Well, um, they got to a point where they could themselves identify a way through. Um, as I said, our job was to constantly define clearly the alternatives and our view as a government. And I was in constant reference with the PM and the foreign minister and others on this subject was that this dragging on forever through this rolling set of appeals and with Mr. Assange, frankly, uh, looking at the prospect of being in incarceration for a very long period of time and no resolution of the case whatsoever, uh, the alternative was plainly the way to go. It sounds like you were encouraging him to take the deal. Uh, you could say that. I couldn't possibly comment. Okay. Uh, but the bottom line is this was a decision for the parties. Right. You um, spent a fair bit of time on the flight home with him. Did you have a good chat? Uh, well, uh, on an aircraft uh, such as that, uh, you're not going to sit quietly in the corner and do the cryptic crossword. And besides, I've always hated cryptic crosswords because uh, so I can't get all so, the answers right. So, so what, did you, uh, what did you talk about? Uh, that's a matter for um, you to ask Mr Assange at some stage. Did you? Certainly we reflected on his time in prison. Right. Because uh, that's a... You can't ignore the elephant in the room. Here is a man who's been in incarceration at a maximum security prison in the United Kingdom for five years with a whole bunch of pretty interesting types. And then prior to that, um, in, if you like, self-incarceration in the Ecuadorian embassy for a period of, what, more than five years. And, and touching down here must have been an emotional moment. Well, my interest as, as a diplomat and certainly as um, the ambassador of the United States was to take this out of being a continuing problem uh, in Australia-US relations for the very long term. And so what was I relieved about and what the foreign policy professionals concerned mm -hmm. about is frankly having this matter dealt with. Obviously delighted to see, as a human being, families reunited as I've been delighted to see with other Australians in distressed circumstances around the world. As the PM said yesterday and the Foreign Minister as well, our job is to go out there and look after Australians to the greatest extent we can, which is why the PM got Chung Lei back. That's why through the agency, the Foreign Minister and the PM, we also got uh, Sean uh, Turnell. Turnell back uh, from Myanmar. Uh, this is hard work and, and there's, there's no precise on this science case, here. On this but, case. but it matters for all Australians because yeah. you don't know when you're going to end up in a pickle. On, the, on this case, I think you just said it was a problem in the relationship. How much of a problem? No, and I said I didn't want it to become an, a long-term right. um, irritant in the relationship. Was it an irritant? Well, uh, if ultimately political relationships between countries are the aggregation of the interests and values and perceptions in both countries, Australia in the United States, because I've lived there, as you know, a long time now, uh, since I left politics in this country, more or less, has a good brand. The United States, by and large, has a pretty good brand in Australia as well. The key thing is not to allow any particular issue to become defining for a very large group of people within either country, which causes the underpinnings of our mm. long-term alliance to come at, into question at any point in the future. I'm a huge believer in the alliance. As you know, we've discussed this over donkey's years. I'm a huge believer in the security relationship with the United States and the political relationship, and that's what I spend the vast bulk of my time on. And so I did not want this personally, nor did our government, having discussed it with uh, ministers, uh, to become a long-term irritant. Okay. And that was the view also put to me by this multi-party delegation the led by early, Barnaby yeah. Joyce and the rest <clears throat> when they came. What about to... Julian Assange's actions as foreign minister? And then when you came back as prime minister, you didn't go out of your way to see him return home. I think he would have been in the Ecuadorian embassy uh, during those years. 
Well, you... as you know, the legal circumstance at the time is that he was under charge from the Swedes, mm. uh, and that matter had not yet been reached determination. He's still an Australian citizen. Yeah, but if, if you go back on your records, mate, uh, when yours truly was uh, in office, I was constantly defending uh, this guy's rights uh, to uh, consular protection. His, I was constantly defending his right to retain an Australian passport. These basic things. And that's because I just saw him in the same categories I see any other Australian. Did you see board. him as a, and do you see him as a journalist? Uh, that is a matter of opinion. Um, what's yours? Oh, what's yours? You're well, a journalist. I'll ask, I'll ask uh, the, no, no, hang I'm on. I'm here hang to ask the hey, questions. But I'm not a journalist. I'm interested no, in yours. I'm here to ask the questions. That's what? true. But, but you know what I mean is that where this would have got particularly interesting is if it actually went to the uh, testing of the First Amendment provisions under the United States Constitution, which is about freedom of the press, mm. would the court, would the justices on the Supreme Court of the United States have deemed this individual to be a journalist or not? We don't know. Uh, my view is that that's a matter for the courts to determine. Uh, I've, got, I've got to go, but I've got to let you go. But just before I do, uh, back to the other part of your job right now with the presidential debate getting underway. How are you going as ambassador building inroads relationships with the Trump uh, circle? Um, we know he had some disparaging remarks about you not so long ago. Have things been patched up there? How's, well, that, he's, um... how's that going? Uh, he's not Robinson Crusoe on that, mate. We're, we're in Parliament House, Canberra. A lot of people have had disparaging things to say about me over the years. That's just life in the fast lane. Um, no, you'd understand and accept and expect of us or whoever is ambassador in Washington. That you're constantly building relationships with both sides, Democrats and Republicans. Why? It's a huge country, biggest economy in the world, massively significant to us. And so whoever the American people vote for, we've got to have decent relationships. So certainly on the Republican side, in the national security space, in the defence space, in the foreign policy space, in the trade policy space, in the economic space, we are now and have been ever since I arrived fully engaged uh, with um, Team Trump, uh, whoever he would choose to become members of his administration if the American people vote for him. At the same time, we do the same with what could be a second Biden administration. That's the job. I know you'll be heading back in a couple of days and you've uh, got a busy few months ahead. Kevin Rudd, we appreciate you giving us some time. Thanks very much, David.